Good morning guys, we're getting ready to start another bedhead here. So let's start out with chapter 5 as we keep uh, plugging through John here. 5 verse 1 has the healing at the pool, so let's dig into that. So sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which is Aramaic, is called Bathsheba, and which is surrounded by five co covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who had been there had been an invalid for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? The invalid replied, Duh. Okay, actually he didn't. But that's kind of what he should reply. I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. Yes, I want to get well. Yes, I want to be better. Yes, I want to uh, be past this state that I've been in for 38 years. So Jesus comes to him and says, Do you want to get well? So the envelope replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stored. When I am trying to get in, someone else always gets down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And at once the man was cured. And he picked up his mat and he walked. So just a, a few things here. This is kind of a different story than what we looked at yesterday. Yesterday was uh, someone coming wanting a, a, just like a quick fix and an immediate thing. <clears throat> and um, Jesus was saying to him, look, unless if you see miracles, you, you guys are never going to believe. And uh, finally, finally said to him, go home. Your son's going to be fine. Can you, you know, basically just trust me at my word? I'm not going to go with you like you wanted to. We're not going to do a big show. But if if you want want just trust my word and that things are going to be okay and and they were, he was kind of the opposite. The guy's not coming to Jesus to be healed. He might not even know who Jesus is. Um, he's actually there at the pool hoping to get healed. Uh, now uh, there's a couple of different things here that are kind of of interest. We really don't know a lot about this particular pool. We know that it was there. Uh, that there's uh, finds in the 19th century from uh, archaeological digs that that matches description. Uh, in the area that it's supposed to be, which is pretty cool. Um, but we don't know if this was a, a God tradition. Like some of the early things that are out there historically uh, say that the, the, an angel would come and stir the pool. You might have heard that when people talk about uh, this particular text, uh, that this was a God thing and that people trusting God would go down and try to be the first one in to be healed. Um, I don't know. I, that partially doesn't really match up with the character of God in, in my mind. And... Um, so I, I don't know how I feel about that. And there's a lot of people who don't believe that there's there's a lot of evidence for that, a lot of documentation for that, as much as uh, kind of folklore. Uh, there is a, a lot of, um, of things there to support that this is not necessarily a God thing as much as it is a cult thing, that there's a cult in that period of time that would have believed these things, taught these things. So people were there looking for the answers in the, in the wrong direction, and then God showed up. And uh, so Jesus came to him, and I, I like that he says that when he learned that he had been in that condition for a long time, that's why he said, do you, do you want a difference? Do you want a change? And uh, I think this is where we can start getting into some life application because a lot of us will get into seasons in our lives that are hurtful, um, that, uh, that uh, disable us, that um, bind us, and for long periods of time, then we're looking to the wrong answers to try to get out of those. If I could just get some more money, if I could just get uh, a husband, if I could just get a wife, if I could just get this or that in my life, you know, and every time I come close to it, somebody else jumps in there in front of me and they mess it up for me, so I'm just going to lay here and I'm just going to be uh, disabled uh, spiritually, which I, I think Jesus looks in situations like that and just like, man, you just been, you've been disabled for so long. Don't, don't you want to get better? Don't you, don't you want something new? Don't you want some freedom in your life? And so we would think our answer would be, duh, but uh, a lot of times it's not. It's like this guy would saying, well, I, I, I just have all these reasons for not being better. I just, uh, the life's unfair to me, and uh, I, I, people just keep doing un mean things to me, and it's everybody else's fault and it, 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 that I can't be free from this. And I, I think Jesus taking saying, you know, get up. And there's an explanation point after it's like, come on, do something about it. Take it. They can come to the real answer. Come, to, come to Christ. Pick up your mat. Walk. Be active. Move forward. Uh, is, is what Jesus is response with. And at once the man was cured and was able to do that. And for some of us, again, I think um, we might be holding ourselves up from a freeing experience with Jesus Christ by trying to get clean so that we can come to Him. You know that kind of mentality. Or, 
blaming other people so we don't take our own personal responsibility and give it over to Christ. So the, the, it really is kind of an interesting situation that he has with this guy that many of us need to hear that when Jesus is calling out, don't you want to get better? Don't you want to be free? Um, and and stop the excuses and just get up and go. Don't, don't you want that? Well, it, it says as we continue that the, the day that this took place was on the Sabbath. And so the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, it's the Sabbath, the law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied that the man who made me well said, pick up your mat and walk. So, you know, it's kind of Jesus' fault. Uh, so they asked, who's this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who healed me, uh, uh, the man who was healed, had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. That Jesus wasn't looking for a big scene, and we see this a lot in Jesus' life, that he had a heart to take care of people and to deliver people, but he didn't want that to be his main mission. Um, There's some, some other reasons that were there that sometimes he would slip away, in this case he slipped away. However, Jesus still had a heart for this man, and he had more things he wanted to say to him. Later, Jesus found him at the temple. In other words, Jesus sought him out, and said to him, See, you are well again. See, that, that you are free. You, that, that you've got this in your life. So stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who made him well. So he's still causing problems, thanks, dude. But stop sinning, and make, and, uh, or something worse may happen to you. So th in this particular case, we, we see that the, his personal sin probably had something to do with his struggle. And Jesus had freed him from that sin. You get up and walk, get the freedom. Like go. It wasn't somebody else's fault. It was your fault. Um, but here's grace. Here's mercy. Here's love. So, so get up. You can keep moving. But stop sinning. Again, this is where 100% love, 100% truth comes in. He gave him great love, great compassion. Gave him forgiveness and healing. He obviously did not deserve. But then said, stop sinning. Stop moving forward. Let's go to the truth part. Let's live differently. Let's live in purity. Let's keep that freedom strong. And some of us need to hear that message as well. So if you're struggling and you're disabled in life, maybe spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, um, maybe Jesus is saying to you, do you want to be healed? And you, you can say, you know what? This, it's everybody else's fault. It's, it, these are things outside my control. Life is just too, too hard. Or we can say, yes, I do want healed. I do want that freedom. And come to Jesus as leader and forgive on our lives. And, and they acknowledge him with our mouth and believe in our hearts, he's the Son of God, and, and, and died and rose again, victorious over sin. We, we can have that right there in front of us and try to excuse it away. So, so accept that, and then af afterwards, let him just come and minister to you and say, okay, now let's change our life. Let's do something differently. Let's move forward in new ways. And when, when you do, don't be like this guy where you're just kind of making the harder for Jesus, but just live in that and enjoy that freedom and give that testimony. And, uh, and and see some new ways as we, we no longer have to be enabled. So, or, uh, disabled. We are enabled. Okay, I'll tell you. That's what bed is all about. I'm half awake. So, uh, that, that's my thoughts as I'm kind of reading through it. Jumped out. Again, feel free to comment in. And um, we'll get to, to tomorrow talking about the authority of the sun. So, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Be blessed.